Uh, do you know something that makes me really sad? Um, is I was like, oh, I've got four days of um, Street Fighter, and then it's Diablo time. Not realizing that Diablo's launch date is the sixth, but because pre-purchased, it's four days early access, so it comes out the same day oh, as no. Street Fighter. Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah, they both release on the second. Because like, now you're not going to be able to. Play, now you can't play Diablo. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope you're not implying that you're going to skip Street Fighter. No, I'm. I'm like, I, no, definitely you'll play it. But I'm just like, uh, which one to play first? Street you know? fight. Street Fighter. You know, obviously being a fighting game is the slowest of burns. It's like learning a new skill. Mm-hmm. So if if there's any game that you could like put off, it would be a fighting game. You'd miss out on like a little bit of intro like shenanigans if something's like really hot or overpowered. You might yeah. miss out on the fun. Yeah, of I that. think you'd also miss out on. There'll be a lot of new people at the start trying. I was going to say yeah, but that the... could also put in bad practices. I, I, I think habits. I think like fighting game newness. If the fighting game's actually popular, which this one's looking to be, um, you, you've got like a good six to eight weeks, I think, of people that will be hopping in casually at the start before. How long did multiverses have? Uh, it had again. Yeah. I think it had like a good six it weeks. Had a good cut, yeah, a few two weeks. But then people were making videos on it, shitting on it, but saying like, "Oh, I remember Donkey's video being like." This is bad. This is bad. This is bad. This is bad. But it's overall, it's a good game. I'm having a lot of fun with it. You should give it a try. And it's like you just did a like ten minute video shitting on the game, for probably for rage, mate. Comparing uh, multiverse to Street Fighter is yeah. probably a bit unfair to Street Fighter. I wasn't taking um, that bait. I was just gonna like <laughs> I'm gonna answer it as honestly no, yeah, as no, I can. It wasn't bait, <laughs> but yeah, no, I understand that the scale of the two. Yeah. No, it does get to a point eventually where. Um, yeah, like give it six months and you're left with you know, a bunch of people that are really good. Another good time to jump in is like sales and stuff, which this game, I imagine like every Street Fighter game will probably have Super Edition, Arcade Edition, Hyper Fighting Super Awesome Edition, like every mm-hmm. two years or so, which is also a good time to jump in. But that's, you know, that's literal years away. But um, yeah. I would say like, yeah, as long as you don't leave it too late. um. You could certainly jump in in like yeah, two or three weeks afterwards if if you get really no, into I, Diablo. I definitely want to like like do at least a couple hours of Street Fighter a week just to make sure that I'm keeping up with it because I'm like, no, I want to get good at a fighting game and uh, like, like I said, it's like it's like a skill, right? You'll do better by doing as opposed to bigger sessions every so often, just play like a handful of matches or the single player stuff. Like every evening or every other evening yeah. just do a little bit um and that'll get you more into it it's looking like the single player is going to be really good for teaching sort of fundamental mechanics and stuff which is really cool oh that single player is only going to be useful for character creation oh it's <laughs> yeah besides making <laughs> absolute horrific <laughs> gremlins and all these other weird <laughs> characters you can make in the story it's looking like um in the street fighter 6 what's it called world tour mode Yes. Um, they're doing a whole bunch of stuff where, uh, you know, there's like characters that attack you in the street. Cause, you know, mm-hmm. Street Fighter. And. Yakuza style. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like Yakuza, like mini fights. And when they attack you, right before they glow, uh, right before they attack, they glow. And, they, and I think the game slows down. It's like, attack them now. And I'm like, hang on. You're just like teaching crush punishes and whatever they were called in Street Fighter 5 and all these like main mechanics that are really hard to normally like get your head around. I think it's really good. It's a really good way of doing it. It's like we're gonna sneak the broccoli in somehow. Literally, yeah. It's, it's like how okay, there's so many complicated things with fighting games. How can we teach them to people without them realizing? You won't button bash for my watch. <laughs> yeah, literally. Don't let them button bash. What was it? Sneak the broccoli in with the <laughs> with the nice food so that no one knows they're learning how to <laughs> crush counter and <laughs> like one tick car a cancel all this other shit so you didn't play the beta at all i did i played on the first day but there were um i only got into bot matches like i said it to like online unranked but i was only coming up against either people named bot or bots 
and they tweeted out being like, oh, it's uh, we're taking the servers down to fix some oh, diff- issues no. everyone's having. And then I didn't play afterwards where apparently it was smooth. So Okay. Look, that's that's my, my only concern about Street Fighter at this point when it comes out is, for God's sake, I hope it just works. Yeah. Because that's been the bane of Street Fighter Five. It's just every time I went to play it, it's just like, oh, yeah, it just doesn't fucking work. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, did we say Will hopped in right? What's up, Will? Hello. So I didn't really give you a chance to. That's okay. Into... You guys were you guys went off on a fighting game, and I was like, I'm just gonna go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> These guys will be a while. <laughs> just vibing in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, we'll get straight into it because it's uh, it's getting on a bit. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Game Forecast, our weekly gaming podcast where we get together and chat about all the games we've been playing and all the news for the week. My name is Josh, aka Bottler Works. And I'm here with Olive Meister Will. Hello. Quick, quick, Steve. Hello, my name is Steve. And if your game does not feature Nicolas Cage, it's probably still a good game. And Sam, Sam. Hello. If what Steve just said seems a bit odd, it will make sense in time. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that news story, but we'll, we'll save it. We'll save it. What have you been up to, Sam? So. Let's, I guess, run through. Um, Let's do it. Bonkai Star Rail yep. is still very much steam ahead. The game that keeps um, on giving. I have not, I've not dropped a single day of dailies or anything. I haven't either. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I. Okay, ready for this? Yeah. I when I wake up at six o'clock in the morning, <laughs> work. I just quickly set it to auto battle to send my energy because it's like a quick. Yeah. Like, Minutes. So I'm like, right, go while I get changed and whatnot. Yeah. I'm like, and now I don't need to worry about energy till I go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's 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 so it's just so easy, isn't it? You just you boot yeah, it, it, you press so a few easy, buttons. And I'm like, you just go. Is it bad that I'm playing Honko Star Rail at six o'clock in the morning every morning? But at the same <laughs> time, if it only takes three minutes, like, yeah, it's so. Is easy. it an issue? But uh, yeah, so that's going. Um gonna be hitting trailblazer level 50 tomorrow or the day after i need you to Just... instantly boost that oh dude going have. mate yeah 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 because going you, up in star Rail, you can lend out your characters to help other people do their dailies um and i'm not sure if you're getting a lot of money for it sam but i'm basically using your one almost exclusively <laughs> uh, so the money is capped out at 10 grand a day and by the way 10 grand is like not a lot yeah, whenever you get yet. the currency you're getting it in the thousands yeah, so. no, no one uses mine so i don't i didn't know that <laughs> okay <laughs> sam's sam's the only person i know that has uh pulled for the newest character that's out because everyone kind of used all their shit on the first pull first one <laughs> who was who a fantastic character still yeah. Whenever I borrow someone else's, I'm always borrowing Seal. <laughs> yeah, because you look. For, I look for my friends list, and just everyone has Seal, which is the first character that costs like 200 quid to pull for. Yeah. But the game gives you enough currency at the start to do like one mega pull, I guess. What you can pull for a character for free. Yeah. So, so yeah, that that's still going happily trucking along with that. Really excited for when we get the next lot of content for it. Yeah. Um, and the new game I've picked up and have been, uh, I've actually stopped at the moment playing uh, Ace Attorney, not okay. because for any reason other than this new game has just got me in its hooks. Yeah. And the game is called Mechabellum. Mm. And it is, it is a mech auto battler. And oh, it's yeah. like, oh yeah, because Steve mentioned this one coming out. It's... It's so simple, but so good. Like you have units, and it's like <clears throat> you pay for, you pay for a set amount of units, and you might right. get a giant mech, or you might get thirty guys, right? And it's very clear the thirty guys their their tactic is swarm tactics. Yeah, and the giant mech might have a really powerful single target shot, or he might have flamethrower, so he mows down multiple units, right? And it's mm-hmm. it's very obvious what a unit's strengths and weaknesses are. Okay. But then it comes down to 
positioning them because you have these like two I'm just going to call them two pillars and if you break a pillar who if if you have yours broken or you break one of theirs it sends out a shockwave okay. that gives a benefit to the person who destroyed it and that benefit is all of the opposing units take like 50% more damage and deal like 50% less damage okay so you have to position in order to defend these things because if you quickly just run in and snipe one it makes the uh, the units that are fighting like the fight's just over right that that's too much of a power swing even if you've got the comp to counter the other comp right. it's like if you're doing half damage and taking mm. 50% more it's, it's just not feasible right and then it, it has on top of this it has like a level up system where whenever your unit kills other units, they get EXP. And cheaper units level up quicker. <laughs> and, you know, heavier units level up slower, as you would expect. Yeah. And you get EXP based off the thing you killed. So if your unit that cost 50 killed something that cost 400, chances are it's leveling up. You know what I mean? Is that, Whereas is the that, other way around... Sorry, carry on. It's not going to do anything. No, you, you jump in. That's, like, level up... And all that stuff is kind is is that's a common mechanic for auto battlers, right? Like they get level ups and bits like that, and then yeah. But I believe in auto battlers, it's like you have to get three of a kind. Right. Like, okay, once you've yeah. got three of a unit, it levels up, and now it's stronger. In this, it just has to get kills. Right. Okay. So it it actually feels like oh, this unit is doing well. It's reflected by the fact that it's now level two. And right, you have okay. to pay money to level up. So these units won't just level up on their own. Like, they get, they hit their EXP cap, and then you have to spend money. So it's still a conscious effort of, I am upgrading you rather than buying a new unit. You know? Yeah. For, so, in terms of, sort of, comparison's sake, is there... Because you've played a lot of these types of games, right? Yeah. Um, what's the nearest, closest thing that other people might have touched that this kind of feels like in the auto-battler? world if anything really. i really don't know yeah because what are the big hitters really in this, in this kind of market there's um i mean tft i was gonna say team TFT. fight tactics it's kind, it's kind of the only remaining yeah. one standing that the, yeah. the dota I one died that, no, right? i think there's a oh no that's a card game or a battle yeah which dota is one the, you had dota uh, dota, dota under auto pets died i think oh i've seen some people play auto pet as auto pet there's the hearthstone one right, Hearthstone Battlegrounds. I uh, you know, I have is that versus other people though. Yeah, I've never even heard of that. What's it called? Hearthstone. Hearth... I want to say Hearthstone Battlegrounds, but it's an yeah, auto it's battler Hearth... Hearthstone. That is, mode. yeah, that's correct. Uh, first, I typed in Hearthstone Auto Battler, and you get an article from Polygon. Hearthstone Battlegrounds is the strangest auto battler we've ever played. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so. Auto battlers, despite being what I thought was a very popular genre, when you put it to me like that, Josh, I I can only really say TFT. And uh, auto yeah, pets always... does pop up quite a bit in my feed. I've always thought of this genre as like super niche. It's like yeah, I... but it's uh, yeah. maybe it's just TFT because TF like so many people play League that so many people play TFT. Yeah, know? that's the, that's the same kind of like like you say the people that play TFT. I feel like are league players that spent a little bit too long in the Riot client one day and was like, what's this TFT thing? It'll be the same yeah. thing for their fighting game. It's like stranded league players will end up booting the the fighting game and be like, huh, okay, <laughs> I'll give it a try. <laughs> but yeah, so this game like it's very positioning based because so you've got these pillars to defend. Yeah. But like if you put all of your weak units out front, then chances are your opponents are just going to shove out like a flamethrower unit or a unit which has high splash damage, right? And then yeah. just completely kill it. And then you can try and place a different unit in front of that, maybe a bulky single target unit, or maybe you build a unit to outrange their AoE unit and kill it before it can AoE. And yeah. like, you play this mind game, and after every round you get a roguelike style buff. Okay. So the round finishes, someone won the round and dealt damage to your opponent. You have health and top left and right. 
and you deal damage based on how many of your units lived or how many of your opponent's units lived hurts you. Right. Um, and then you get these cards that you can pick from. And you have to pay for them or they're free if they're not that yeah. great. And you have the exact same selection as your opponent. And at all times, you can see what cards your opponent took, except for the current round. Oh, I like that. That's cool. So, if I take, in this picture, for people watching, there's an amplifier one. If I took that, my opponent wouldn't know, but the second the round starts, they would. And you can also see what unit it's on as well. Uh, So, the second a round starts... There's basically perfect information. Yeah, as soon as as soon as your hands are off the steering wheel and the game yeah. takes over and you have to watch the consequences of your actions, that's yeah. when you're told if you fucked up or not. <laughs> the on- the only thing you never see is how much money your opponent has. I believe that is the only information hidden from each other. That's mm. is that can you not work that out by seeing Yes. What they've got. Yeah. If if you really wanted to, yes. Right. Okay. Because yeah, as soon as you know, as soon as you see your opponent, he's got... built two units that cost one hundred. Exactly. We only got yeah. two hundred that round. Because you both again, you get the same amount of money, <clears throat> unless one of you's got a buff that says, "Oh, I get fifty more money every round." Yeah. Yeah. But then they probably bought that because it was a card. So, you know, it takes two rounds to pay yeah. itself off, and then blah blah. And that's blah. that's quite hard though. It's like you say that, you, like I'm I'm saying that as if like oh you can just work it out, but like sometimes yeah, work no. it out really quickly. It's not. It's, easy yeah, to it's, do. it's like you said it, and I was like, yeah, you can work it out. I've never attempted to. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's the equivalent again. Yeah, it's the equivalent I'm, of like any like shooter game, which has been like he's right there. Why don't you just shoot him? Like because I didn't. Because <laughs> my mind was <laughs> doing a million and one other things or something. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's really um. This game can be very punishing because if you, it can snowball a little bit if yeah. you lose multiple rounds hard because your opponent starts upgrading their units. Yeah. And units, when they upgrade, literally, upgrade is just double its current attack and health values. Yeah. That's what the upgrade is. Okay. So if, if you get a unit that goes from level one to level two, it's now essentially two units mixed into one and then if it levels up again really early it's now four units worth in one unit but it costs a lot less to upgrade than it does to buy other units so is there any kind of catch-up mechanic if you are behind not yeah surrender (laughs) 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 these games take like five to six minutes oh right okay so that's not really the point is yeah the 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 thing is, I hate to say this, but it's like a lose to it, learn from it, get good kind of thing. Lose to it, unit. complain it's OP, use yeah. it next round. Yeah. Like there, there's this unit called Stormcaller, <laughs> and it's like four mortar <laughs> units, essentially. They have mm-hmm. a really high range, but they have a minimum range, so if you get into that minimum range, they cannot attack you. Mm-hmm. And they can only hit ground units. And everyone is like, man, these things are so OP because you just build these other units that counter air and then all they do is just like kill things. And I'm like, yeah, but there are things that outrange those things. And also, I- I've actually found, although these things are like mortar units that does massive AoE, if you just swarm a lot, then your guys move forward utterly destroy everything in front of them because your opponent's kind of eggs and all in one basket of yeah. I'm going to kill you from far away and you can just walk and because the, the missiles are projectiles so you just you dodge them, them by running yeah. forward mm. um, so there is this like people are like oh this unit's OP how do you stop this and there has been a couple of times where my opponent has like done a comp and I've gone I don't know how to stop this but I think that's because there's always that play of like I needed to start stopping this two rounds ago now I've noticed too late and he's got a level advantage and supplemented the weakness that I can't counter it now okay so so is this the setup like other auto battlers where it's like eight people and you're trading in opponents or is it no this, this is just pure one-on-one or two-on-two two. you queue your one-on-one what, or two-on-two yeah two. okay you queue what you want to play and i guess when, 
yeah, you go. I guess my other question then would be, um, how the end of every auto battler that I ever played kind of became a formality, where it's like the no. last three, four minutes of every auto battler I've ever played is like this guy's just beaten me. There's nothing I can do with uh, barring an insane stroke of luck on my yeah. part. So, uh, as I say, there there have been like on one hand amount of games where like i've lost three rounds in a row and i just cannot figure out what i need to do yeah but most of the time especially my strategies i will end up losing the first or second round and then win like four in a row yeah and then the amount of times where my opponent will just do something and then win a round and then i'm like okay, well, now I need to do that. And then they'll do something else. And I'm like, well, I'm trying to stop that other thing. And then I just <laughs> lose after winning like four in a row because I've hard committed to this strategy, which oh, worked, right, yeah. got me right. going. And then they've reacted properly. Because while you have your like big grid to defend yourself, there's mm -hmm. also two really thin strips that are on the flanks of your opponent's board. So okay. like when oh, I'm building... Okay. I try to build fast units at the back, so if anyone tries to flank me, I'm kind of dealing with it. Yeah. But then I get too reliant on that, and someone will build a unit at the back, and now this unit that's never defended the back before, because there's no been nothing to defend from, now isn't at the front where it has been every other time, so now the f battle at the front goes God. different. <laughs> and I'm like, your entire purpose was to defend the flank, but by defending the flank, we've lost the front. I, I, I just, you know I cannot do these. I, I'm not smart enough for these games. You know what I the, just can't do You know do what this these. sounds like? This sounds like a StarCraft II custom game. Yes. Uh, that is exactly writ large. What this, yeah. <laughs> That's what, yeah. the, that's what we said when, when Steve brought it up, like, one or two weeks yeah. ago, it was coming out, and I was like, this is just some fucking StarCraft mod, what is this, Steve? And, that, <laughs> and, now, and now Sam's lost a week to it's it. It's so fun. <laughs> it is really fun. And again, because the games are so quick, like, I think the longest I've ever been in a game is ten minutes. Yeah, easy yeah. jump in, easy jump out. Yeah, yeah. Is there, is there we, any single player component, or is it purely multiplayer? It has a tutorial, right? and I, I believe it does have like solo it also has like wave defense where like okay I, I didn't particularly like it because in the wave defense your opponent's board essentially changes vastly every round yeah so okay. you don't feel oh, like so you're less, building like, to counter yeah, yeah you're just yeah. trying to build good stuff okay um, yeah i was just curious it, yeah in case it does sometimes have a can single be, can be... player with a difficulty slider so that you can like yeah try and really vet out strategies. It, it can be intimidating sometimes for certain people to be like, here's a new game about strategy or being smart or thinking, and it's purely against other people. Go for it. Yeah. yeah I immediately <laughs> just jumped into 1v1. So it's like fighting like games, isn't it? It's literally fighting games, yeah. Because cause I, <laughs> I can jump into a fighting game and be like, yeah, whatever, I'll get beaten up. But when there's something about this where I'm like, oh, don't know. <laughs> it's kind of scary. <laughs> I don't, I, don't yeah, know. I, think, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is because it is essentially the same thing. Yeah, I think the other thing is is it's just because you're comfortable with fighting games. But with this, it's like yeah. there's nothing on the line. Yeah, my yeah. pride. I, I think a lot Except of people. Get... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, I'm going to push it along. Have you got any like closing things to to say? About? Um, the only other thing to mention is it has every unit has four upgrades that you can give. Yeah, And when you buy an upgrade, it gives it to every unit of that kind that you have bought and now will buy for that game. Okay. So if you buy a range upgrade for a sniper, all snipers now have the range upgrade. All snipers you buy will now have the range upgrade for this. That's good. Uh, yeah, push uh, for this entire round. Uh, not round, sorry, this entire match. That pushes so you down it... a certain path, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But these four upgrades, you can swap them out uh, in the main menu. You have like a loadout for each unit. So what your sniper does might not be the same as what your opponent's sniper does. Oh, I thought this was a mid-game thing. This is like an outside meta thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's cool. So you oh, can okay. customize to say, like, ah, actually, I want these tanks to be anti-air units. Oh, uh, okay. And, like, your opponent might just not see that coming. Is that, is do you it... find it's like, do you find the balance has been pretty good so far for, like, an indie game? Yeah, I've I've not I've definitely not had anything come up where I'm like, oh, well, the, this this unit's just broken. 
<laughs> like this has just not happened because that, uh, that's always my thing whenever i play one of these like hyper competitive indie games or something i'm always like it's not it's not when the broken thing you know it's not if the broken thing is going to happen it's when someone yeah. just has to find it you know mm. but no it's, i mean i i have bought and used every single unit currently yeah. which is mad because normally there's like three units you just don't use right at yeah. Least. Yeah. yeah yeah um but yeah no i'm loving this game and it's mechs so you know yeah if you're into you're still all playing... the mecha stuff you still playing uh what was that other custom starcraft game that got made into a real a oh, real legion boy? td2 legion td you still you ever <laughs> look back in on that um i was playing that a fair amount with lewis actually but this yeah. was a while ago this was a yeah. while ago still so, you were like still the worst name ever for a game <laughs> yeah it is bad isn't it <laughs> but <laughs> Because Sam was like top one percent in the world at some point in that game, right? I got right? there. I got yeah, there. Yeah, top one percent yeah. in the world at Legion TD2. It's good Actual shit. Actual celebrity in the, in the podcast. <laughs> I was right? that was like two days of grinding ranked. I remember. I remember watching you do some of that. It was fascinating. <laughs> that's but cool yeah, though. That, like that's... top one percent of Legion TD2 players. It's like that puts you as what like ten of you. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it all in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah that's all i got but thoroughly enjoying this game yeah anyone listening that sounds cool we want to check it out that's mechabellum it's early access on steam 14.99 um this will attract a certain type of person i think um yeah it's not for everyone well, and it and it's but, sam yeah <laughs> yeah if you're sam you're gonna love this <laughs> yeah 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 well, what can i say <laughs> all right and what have you been doing steve Hi, I've been uh, playing some Inkbound. Oh, I'm excited to hear it, about this. Mm-hmm. This is a game by the people who uh, made Monster Train. It just came out the other day. Um, and uh, I'm actually like having a lot of fun with this. So this game is, uh, first and foremost, it's a roguelike, um, you know, um, but it is uh, it's like an online co-op turn-based uh, not JRP turn based, but like um, uh, almost sort of like XCOM Marion Rabbids turn based ish um, okay. uh, game. And it is a lot of fun. Um, so when you first go into the game, you get to pick one of three different characters, and uh, they have three different skills, um, and that's it. And then you, you go in, you do, you like, you then you like basically you get thrown into the roguelike missions you get to pick um like you can get like uh, upgrades for your skills you can get uh like items um which are basically like just like general passives um you can get some potions and some like uh, consumables like on occasion um but like the the premise of this is is that you you'll pick your path and then every single arena there's like a circle arena you go in, you click on it, and then it spawns a bunch of enemies. And you... I've only done the single player for this, by the way. I haven't tried the co-op yet or the multiplayer. Right. Um, but you go in... Yeah, you click on the, the the middle thing, and it spawns a bunch of enemies, and it will also show more enemies are spawning. And the idea is, is that you've got, like... It's like a, a bar, but you've basically got, like, five actions per turn. Um, you can get more actions per turn by like uh, clicking on things on the floor or getting upgrades that allow you to have more turns. But um, yeah, so you each of your skills has like a cost and a cooldown. Um, I've only played one class so far, which is like the warrior class. But yeah, so you basically have to try do as much damage while positioning yourself to avoid um, uh, enemy AOEs on the ground that you can pre-see. Like you see how much damage you're going to take at the end of the turn. So you kind of have to try finagle your way to kill or position, kill enough enemies or position yourself where you're not going to like insta die. <laughs> That's like, what was that game that the, Oh, will you'll know what this is. What was that game on like a grid made by the FTL people? 
with tanks and you went back in time and fought. oh into the breach into the breach into the breach, into the breach yeah that's very similar that like i'm just thinking of that when you were describing that where it's like you can move stuff but then you also see the upcoming like yeah madness that's about yeah. to happen so uh yeah and then like it, it's it's a lot of fun and as you're going through uh you have like choices of like are you going to do like this easier battle or this harder battle with more rewards um um, and your HP uh, stays the same between... Well, uh, your HP carries over from battle to battle, so you really have to try, um, like, plan around that. And if your HP gets too low, maybe you need to take, um, like, on one of the, like, break rounds, you have to, like, go to, like, the healing area rather than one of the places that will give you another upgrade. And there are, like, really cool boss fights. I think because there are the... Um, I'm not, uh, what they're called the projections of the ground which tell you where attacks are going to be like it's super interesting to be like oh this boss is charging and leaving a like a, a path on the ground um that you can't follow so you have to like pre-plan ahead a little bit um and yeah like every and as you're battling um there's like a the circle get that that your the arena gets smaller and smaller so there is less room for you or the enemies to uh like position yourself in so i think it's like i'm really curious if this game like how this game is going to play in multiplayer because sometimes i'm like i'm getting into like tight squeezes (laughs) yeah every every uh, screenshot on the uh, steam page is all multiplayer stuff Mm-hmm. Um, seems to be a big focus on that. But yeah, like uh, it's, as I said, I've only played the warrior class so far. That like by default, you start off with warrior, like a, a rogue archer type of character, and like a mage. And then there are two more to unlock at the moment. This game is in early access, so there is like slots for five more characters after that as well. Um, but yeah, you very quickly, like after you do like one mission, you can play as the other two characters if you want, and then you can start the unlock for the other two. But they are they do seem to be like quite lengthy as well. Yeah. Um and yeah, when I first played this game actually, I didn't have the most fun with it. Cause I, I was like I was playing it, I was like, it's okay. But the the unfortunately there wasn't too much of a tutorial and it is kind of like you look at the skills and it's like oh it's explaining a lot and it doesn't have the handy thing of you hover over a keyword to, with a tool tip right. for, for some of the skills yeah and i was just like wasn't feeling it but then i played it again today being like no I want, i'm gonna give this a bit more of a try and i like actually sat down and like like really looked at it and i was like actually i'm kind of really having fun and i did like two or three like whole rounds of it and it, yeah, it's it's something good that I'm like I'm hoping that maybe I can wrangle some people to play with me, even though it's like it costs sixteen pounds this game, because um, it's it is a lot of fun for I mem- sure. I remember um, I don't know if it's just me, but Monster Train, mm. which was their previous game, I found mm-hmm. that quite tricky at the start. I felt like there was a lot of systems sort of happening, and I would sort of struggle. And until it started clicking. Um, yeah. it, it got a lot better for me. I know it's a different type of game entirely, but it's yeah. still like roguelike systems. Yeah, there, there's one thing that kind of annoyed me, but I think it, because it is it, this game is always online, um, right? Uh, and because of the multiplayer aspect, is I couldn't find a way that if I like kind of messed up my turn, or not messed up, but you know, like oops, I've used up all my movement. Uh, like, like, because you can move or attack with the same bar. But like, if I had messed up and I'm like, oh, uh, can I maybe redo my turn? I c- you couldn't redo your turn, so you have to really strategize and think. I think that's because, like, if you're playing with other people, you you know, <laughs> you wouldn't be, a be able nightmare. to. Yeah, everyone rewinding <laughs> yeah. every two seconds. Yeah, but like, um, and the other thing was like, I like this game is it's very interesting because like from as uh. With my warrior, his like main skill is bonk, which is like his. You can spam that. It's just like a little um, cone in front of him, which does damage, and you can like it costs one no cooldown, so you can spam that multiple times. Um, his second skill is a leap. His third skill is like a giant single target attack with like a long cooldown. And then as you progress, like your fourth and fifth skill, you'll actually get randomized. Like I assume it's like you, everyone gets the same. Uh, pool of skills um, for the fourth and fifth skills but like yeah. i've had like a poison nova i've had like a fireball i could lob um like a cone of cold 
uh there's a, a like a heal um a shield like a, a nice shield I could, there's a bunch of different skills um and it's it really does like the upgrades do make the game because like you can just like upgrade uh like your your single target like spammable attack or you can make your big attack like really powerful like make it aoe make it do like burn damage make it uh reduce cooldown if you get a kill with it um and then when you kill bosses i think that like, you kill at least three or four bosses per round you get like an epic upgrade for one skill um which is uh okay. really nice as well so like that will be like a uh, usually i found it usually makes skills either like you can do better single target or better aoe but yeah it's a it's a lot of fun so far i've really been enjoying it do you know if you can actually finish a run right now because it's early access right is, is there I, like an ending to a run i so my first time i played i died very like i died halfway through the run because i picked like oh i can do a hard mat round rather than like an easy round so i died through that the second run i did i actually finished i got very lucky with upgrades and i managed to like complete and finish a whole round um which was a uh, i'm not sure if it's just like i was like just good at the game you know or <laughs> god, god gamer <laughs> if it was just finishing but like um you get like yeah there, there's like a hub world and there are quests and there is like challenges um right. one thing to note is that when you go into the round it will often give you like a choice of three different of the zones to pick and like there are different quests for like like at the moment i've got one to go to like, the gloomwood and it's like enter the gloomwood twice and then there's like eat some fish in the gloomwood kill this many enemies in the gloomwood but there's also like a water one a training ground one a lava one there's like a bunch of different ones um so it does seem like you can like finish runs and uh okay. like yeah get upgrades i'm not sure so far other than like uh quests which give um like potential item unlocks to your item pool um there's no it doesn't seem to be like any uh permanent like upgrades i might not have just looked into the game that much but like i haven't noticed anything like there is an account level where like, i think i'm level seven or it might be a battle pass level or something but uh i haven't noticed anything where it's like oh if you if you you know keep playing yeah. you'll get currency to buy this or something i'm not sure though but because i haven't like looked too much but... I, feel, I feel like early access roguelikes either come mm -hmm. in like one or two flavors in that uh, like a solid run from start to finish will be there in early access, but the mm -hmm. metagame stuff is what sort of comes later. Um, or the other way around, where they'll have like a metagame component, but you'll get onto stage two of five in a run, mm -hmm. and then it'll be like, yeah, you come back another day. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was trying, yeah, I was curious as to, it sounds like this might be like a little bit of the one where the meta stuff and like classes are what's coming later whereas a run maybe is here. yeah um, well, it's also like when you queue up there's like unranked or ranked i've only done unranked i'm not sure how they would do ranked if it was just like leaderboards yeah that's weird ranked um, that is weird but yeah i was gonna say this game is fun as a single player game i i could definitely see myself playing it a bit more for like single player maybe like you know until i get bored but i think it's really gonna shine in the multiplayer um, I have a, um. Sorry, you carry on. I was gonna say it's just a shame that like it's get it's one of those games that's gonna be like, can you get your friends to buy it? You yeah. know. <laughs> I, was, I was just gonna say when when you brought this game up again, like one or two weeks ago, as mm -hmm. an upcoming game. Um, I think I said then that I really don't like the look of this game, like the aesthetic, and looking yeah. at and like watching the videos now and looking at these screenshots. I, 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 there's just something about this game I don't think it looks bad I think it looks really like, uh, like it, it looks cluttered um, I, I don't know it's just something kinda... about it it's just yeah I don't know if like, maybe that like, changes during gameplay um, is it like a better in, in motion, motion yeah Would you... it, it might be like I was going to say sometimes with the enemy spawning especially in some of the harder fights it does get a bit like you're looking for on the ground of like where's the free spot where there's not an yeah. enemy like <laughs> target on the ground um 
it can get cluttered, I guess, but it's, 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 that's why, like, in some fights, it, you really do need to, like, prioritize, like, your yeah. AoE, I think, because, yeah, some enemies will are spawners where it's like you've got to kill that enemy quickly. <laughs> like, this, this, this screenshot here, for anyone watching, this looks like a WoW raid. Like, <laughs> yeah. like straight. There's, there's four characters. That's definitely a then, boss. Yeah, this is, this is a boss. There's, there's, like, four characters, uh, hotkeys boss health bar with debuffs and stuff underneath it, raid icons all over the floor. It's, it's crazy. I um, mm -hmm. just didn't know if it was it yeah, is, in it's, motion, if it was that intense. It's not too bad, because basically, as I said, like during your turn, you get to do five or more actions yeah. without anything moving. So you get to like do all your movement, and then you, the main thing is you just want to end on a spot where you're not gonna die, <laughs> and then the enemies all take their turn like within like one second. Like it's it all happens at once. So um, it's it's not too bad because it's not like just constant like barrage and like having to like like you know like in action games where they got targets on the ground you just like oh god you got the panic of like can i move out of this quick enough in this game it's not can i move out of it quick enough it's can i end on a good spot right yeah okay it's definitely interesting i think um yeah this game could be absolutely awful it's obviously not but even if it was awful i think i liked uh, monster train so much that i will check mm -hmm. this out at some point um, yeah because i thought yeah, yeah i yeah, love monster I train. Feel the same i hate to say it but i feel like this would be a great game pass game <laughs> 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 or an epic game move, store <laughs> or an epic game store game you know well, that's the, or like you say that as if like it's a joke but i'm looking at it now like i want to try this but i don't want to pay like 17 quid for it i just want to try it yeah, there's no demo either, which is like the yeah yeah. Monster Train anything. is on Game Pass, right? So it's not it is, yeah, it's not impossible. Could be could yeah. be a thing. Monster Train was um like an early Game Pass game as well. I remember like when Game Pass yeah, first came out, I was like, oh, what the fuck's Monster Train? I'll play this. Well, it's Actually, awesome. <laughs> I haven't launched Xbox uh, Game Pass in a while. I just need to double check that it's not on there now. <laughs> it's, it's not. I just it, had a look. Yeah. Uh, Got Redfall just completely <laughs> sal salted the earth on Game Pass. Huh? It's, yeah, we're all out, are we? Okay. It's like Redfall came out, it sucked, haven't opened Game Pass in, what has it been, like three weeks? <laughs> what, who's the guy in charge of Microsoft again? Uh, it's what, what Mi Miyamoto, name? right? No. <laughs> no, I was going to say, he's like, don't add any more Game Pass games until people like Redfall are <laughs> making this work. Yeah. Oh, why can't I remember his name? I should know his name. I just. It's... Phil Spencer. Phil Spencer. Phil that's, that's Spencer. Yeah. Good old Phil Spencer. Yeah. I give this a hearty, like, if you've got 17 quid and maybe some friends to play it with, hearty check out, even if you're alone and you like this style of game. It's it's a good it's a it's a good little game to play. Especially if you've got nothing else to, to play right now. Cool. Alright then, we'll chuck it along then. Uh what have you been up to, Will? I haven't really I mean, aside from the big one, we'll probably all chime in on in a bit um i haven't really played all that much this week i played a little bit of darkest dungeon 2 now that it's hit 1.0 did you buy that mm -hmm. originally like I when did. it first came okay right i spent about seven pounds on that game i think total <laughs> i remember you streaming that <laughs> yeah yeah i did oh yeah i did for a bit didn't i um, how are you finding that i can't i'm struggling to get into it I, i'm gonna be I, honest I, i've tried i don't think i like it no it's uh, the it's like uh, to be fair i keep playing it really late at night like i'll always be like ah oh, video rendering and it's like half half 11 time to boot up a run for darkest dungeon so my patience for learning this game is probably not at a really big um you know I, i'm not probably not giving it the 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 concentration it yeah. requires because like there's a bunch of times where i've been like tempted to take a screenshot of what I'm looking at and just been like, there's just too much on the screen right now. There is so many stats and numbers and symbols. And I'm like, I just can't be, bo I can't be bothered. Yeah. I just can't be bothered. And it's like, it's one thing when it was a persistent uh, RPG, I, like more, you know, persistent party and characters where it was like, I'm going to get to know what this character does and what this, 
but like where it's run based i always get to a boss where i'm just like there's like a hundred symbols under them and i'm just like yeah i don't know i just sod it just hit him i just don't know don't care. I don't just care. Care. yeah just attack yeah. attack <laughs> just get it over with and i think it's compounded by the fact that progress in this is um you get currency for you get this meta currency for doing basically anything in the game candles um candles yeah candles of hope or something um and that's all for like so it's like 50 percent like permanent upgrades and 50 percent like you're just kind of unlocking more stuff like more yeah. characters and things like that like new items and stuff um but i always i always go for a run and i'll beat the first like couple of areas and then i'll just get to a point where i'm like oh, i'm just gonna cash out and just see what i had the what same the i had the same unlocks. thing i had the exact same like, thing and i just feel like that's if I'm getting like bored of a run before it's even over, like, what am I really? Am I really mm -hmm. into this sort of yeah. thing? Yeah, it's like I know I've got enough candles to unlock something, and yeah. I literally, I just don't have because this game is. I think it's because this game is just so oppressive. It's just like I yeah. cannot be bothered to push through for ten more candles <laughs> when I can just quit now and get something. Yeah, um, maybe that goes that, over time when you literally just don't have enough currency to get the intro stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it sounds but, like you <laughs> you had a similar experience to me. I it's weird because I played a lot of the first one. Now, to be fair, I never finished the first one, so maybe this got yeah. the same. But yeah, I don't know. Like, just there's just too, so much stuff happening, and then I get to a boss, and it's like, um there'll be like a trick to beating this boss, right? And I'll be like, oh, I have to do this. And it's like, no, you don't. You had to do something else. And the boss just kills my whole party. And I'm just like, oh, sure. Yeah. I end up thinking like, oh. am I like missing some uh, like meta thing that would help here? Or do I need more character upgrades? Or am I literally just bad and I have to work out how this game works? It's kind of... Yeah. And, and in the first one, it was all about managing like... Um, it was very slow paced and it was like I'm going to manage, oh my character's picked up this thing, can I live with this like, you know, oh he's scared of the dark or something and it's like, can I live with that? Am I going to bench him while I fix this yeah. uh, sort of thing? And that was kind of, that was interesting, I kind of enjoyed that and this one is just kind of like oh your guy freaks out and it's, I'm like <laughs> am I just going to struggle through this roguelike run for another like hour with this guy who's kind of a dead weight now or should i just fucking I just start again you know, throw the run and just start again like yeah. i don't care <laughs> i don't have any investment in these characters it's... well it's it's the it's the thing of it's almost i don't know like how deep you want to try and dive into this but it's almost like the they have they give you the same structure of try to keep your characters alive as much as possible people you want them to survive but then the meta progression the first game had of, you know, your characters coming in and out with you is gone. So it's like, well, if it, I'm going to lose them anyway. So yeah, I, so exactly. I have, yeah. So there's no sense of, like, danger that I'm going to lose this character yeah. because they're going to die. Any, I'm gonna, they're going to lose them anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, it's a yeah. shame that this game isn't as good because I remember people loved the first one. Like, well, it's, it, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's, it's bad. Yeah, like, I don't think it's bad. I just think I just uh, yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't think it's bad, and I can respect their like, hey, we're not going to make just the same game again, but like more stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, we're going to make something completely different, and they can exist alongside each other, and that's fine. You can just play one or the other. You don't have to like both. And it's like, yeah, I respect that. I just don't like this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll wait. I'll wait for Darkest Dungeon Three. I think. Do you do you oh, think no, it should be called Darkest Dungeon Two at this point? Call it like dark, it been like darkest journey a darkest, or a darkest dungeon story <laughs> <laughs> just, I, just darkest yeah. something because it's it's very different outside of the combat it's very yeah. it's very different to the first game to the point where i could understand if someone was upset because they bought it and they're like what the fuck it's completely hmm. different <laughs> this might be dumb of me but i'm like i think someone was like Oh, we could design the logo like this, where it's the D plus also it's the torch, you <laughs> yeah. know. And it's like, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Let's just do this. We can't call it Darkest Dungeon Two. Yeah, but look at this logo I made. Oh, that's fucking sick. Yeah. <laughs> Went logo first. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
yeah, I don't know. Like I, everything, ev everything about the presentation, the art, the music, the combat is is still really good. Once you're doing it, it's just. I think the rapping this time is just like it's not. It's, yeah, it's not. It doesn't do it for me this time. It's they, weird. They, they have it, perfectly taken the sprites. Oh, Jay Z. From, oh, not sprites, but like <laughs> you know the the art, art asset, two D art assets from the first game, and yeah. translated them into three D. I think it it yeah. looks uh, it looks amazing. This game looks gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. 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 Did a great job there. But mm -hmm. I'm just not. Yeah, just not. I have a feeling it. I'm feeling it. This this game, I feel like at least for me, will be a game. I come back to in three years time and be like, yeah, sure, why not? And then I'll get really into it. <laughs> or, or what will happen is um, that someone will put a YouTube video up that's like, you all slept on Darkest Dungeon 2. You'll, it'll be like a 30 minute, this is why it's cool. I'll watch that and be like, oh. And then, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, then I'll play it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all. Um, I might give it another go. I don't know. There's so much to play right now. Um, yeah. And this just isn't grabbing me. Um, something I did play that I've, I started to di literally today, um, and I played about an hour and a half of is uh, Bolt Gun. Um, oh, nice! Yeah, the boomer shooter, which I didn't know until literally this morning. But it's a sequel to Space Marine. Um, what the fuck? <laughs> or at least a kind of mini in between episode of. Uh, Space Marine and Space Marine Two. <laughs> That's so Which same is, uh, character, same guy. No, but it's the same setting, same like planet, and they all and it references stuff that's happened in the first Space Marine. Oh, I don't remember fucking Space Marine One. That was like a decade <laughs> I, ago. I didn't really either. <laughs> remember this from mm. Space Marine? No, <laughs> yeah, no, not really. Um, but I don't really have a lot to say on this. It's. I don't think it's. There's not really much to say. I don't think they've made. Like, have you played a boomer shooter? They made one, and it's yeah. it's pretty good. It's called Bolt Gun, so obviously it's not taking itself too seriously. It and there is a bolt gun, and the guns feel really good to shoot. And that's about. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, I'm gonna play through it to the end. So unless something radically changes, but like, I can't think of a more like you know exactly what you're signing you up wanna, for. You wanna <laughs> like save it for next week and break it down proper next week, maybe. Well, yeah, um, but I, I, yeah, that's what I mean. I don't really know. What I was gonna say, to say I. It. I watched Blankcast play some of this, and he got a bit further than you did. Yeah. And oh, he he got to a boss fight. And it looked very crazy and intense, and he you yeah. know he took a few times it. So where you got on the hardest difficulty straight away, I'm like, good oh, luck I'm gonna with bump that. that down. That was a stupid idea. I don't know why I did. That. I've always I've always said this a few times, which is people say, oh, how do I get better at PC first person shooters? Oh, how do I? It's it's play games like this, like the <laughs> like games with like really quick movement shooting. Twitch shooting. Yeah. This is mm -hmm. this is like the stuff to play because you can. What I imagine finish this in somewhere between ten to fifteen hours. I imagine maybe shorter. I don't know. I've heard some. It's something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's in. It's you get in, you get out. It's fun, and you get better at these types of games with every single one that you play. Yeah, it's like an aim trainer, except it's Warhammer themed. Yeah. There's and... a the the only thing I have to say is there's a button to make your guy just yell stuff, oh, which I yeah. think every game. Uh, yeah, should have. <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom would be more what fun it, if I could just make Marauders. Luke swear. Marauders has the fuck you button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. See, it's all, it's always better. It's always better. Yeah, the, the Dead Space had the stomp, but then you realize halfway through that it's not actually for stomping. It's just for making Isaac swear, like <laughs> scream scene. Yeah, yeah, as he yeah. as he creates just meat pulp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So I don't really have anything really to say on that except the art is fucking sick uh yeah i love it's it so good it's so good the really chunky sprite work yeah yeah exactly anything else um, been playing or? well yes after last week and you guys sold it so well i went out and i bought tears of the kingdom Wee. And... okay because i couldn't he fell for it and <laughs> yeah because i couldn't stand um I couldn't face picking up the Joy Cons. I bought a Pro controller as well to play it with. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean that game's really good. I do have some problems, okay? Because um, I feel like we could jerk this game off some more, but I feel like that's mm -hmm. not where the interesting part is, right? I feel like we boot it up, and I feel like the beginning of this game is kind of rough in spots. Where uh, in what way? 
it felt like the game was assuming I had just come off of Breath of the Wild, and I was um, maxed. Yeah, I was like, I knew exactly what I was doing at any one moment, and then it would just be like, "Here's an enemy," and you're like, "Okay." Uh, okay, <laughs> and you just kind of muddle your way through. Similar for like, um, like I knew there was a way to throw things, but I couldn't. I just couldn't figure it out, like on the control pad. And I, and it's not an easy game at the start. I felt like most things were just one shotting me, um, and it was just the game was just like I don't know, figure it out, you fucking idiot. <laughs> you just played Breath of the Wild, didn't you? Six years ago, what are you, what are you struggling for? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, that's uh, it's I interesting. Just... I didn't. I didn't have that problem at all. Yeah. Really, I just picked up a stick and started swinging it at robots, and was like, "This will do." Maybe, yeah. Maybe I'm just old now and I can't handle it. But I, I don't know. I felt like the beginning of this game was kind of rough, and it's to the. It was weird that it's like it lets you muddle through for ages, and then every now and then you'll run into a shrine that's like, "Have you tried throwing things?" And I'm like, "Wait, this would have been good like ten hours ago." <laughs> Fuck. And that's just plonked randomly in the world somewhere as well. Exactly. You could run it like that could be the fiftieth try you do. And it's like like I had one the other day. We're like twenty hours in, probably more than that. I've played an awful lot of this. Um we're like God knows how many hours in. And I just did a shrine that's like, have you tried shooting things in the head? And it's like, yeah. Oh boy, no, I never thought of that. God. Yeah, there's quite a few like that. I think there's sort of it's like Nintendo getting ahead of themselves. Kind of like, well, they're obviously gonna go this way next. And it's like, no, yeah, I, I did not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or you just didn't stumble over that one. Yeah. Or you just decided not to get distracted by every shrine you yeah. see along the way or whatever and just missed it um yeah i don't know it's really it's really good i really like it i think um it's kind of wild it's just they just stapled banjo kazooie nuts and bolts Literally. on here and it just totally yeah. works and it kind of <laughs> but it's my favorite part is when you walk up to like a uh like a stable or whatever and there's just like a bunch of bits there and it's like hey you want to make a car <laughs> and you're like kind of yeah sure yeah i absolutely do yeah <laughs> yeah ride around on this for a couple of hours great i've gotten to a few bits in the sky where there's just something's just built and it's like here's yeah. a here's a flying machine with rockets and a steering wheel you want to <laughs> just take it i'm like yes please <laughs> i'm i'm very impressed at how for the most part the i've not run into anything yet where i like try and do something and the game is like i don't understand what you want like most of the time it's like i'll strap a bunch of shit together hop on and it'll be like you are making a sled i see what you're going for here yeah. and you just cruise about on it and it doesn't ever like nothing ever just explodes or physics -y freaks out or anything yeah like source it's... engine gibbing in the floor exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> it all just kind of works yeah 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 i've um, i've put um a bunch more time into this as well i'm I want to say like I'm probably like halfway through. I guess you get distracted so easily in this game. Yeah, yeah. It's well, there's like insane. there's like four. The main quest has you go to like four main threads, right? To yes. Start. Yeah. So you have, so you've done two of those. I've done two sure. of those, and I've just done something else, which ended in a scenario where it felt like the game was kind of like right. Yeah, cool. Let's go wrap this up. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are far away from that. What, what are we talking about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need to get back into this. I took a break because I was doing a bunch of other bits this week. Yeah, but uh, oh, I'm so I'm so need to get back into the Zelda yeah. hype train. But the, the way like the way I sort of played it and the way my brain works is, I feel like you're supposed to do a lot of these sort of threads at the same time. Um, you know, you mm -hmm. do some dungeons and you do some of the um, like what they called hieroglyphs around the map and then you do a bit of that and a bit of this bit of that whereas i have just focused on one of these things and finished it and that's yeah. where it's yeah i've got a whole bunch of story out of it and yeah the game's like yep let's go and i'm like nah i've got like eight <laughs> hearts <laughs> yeah yeah like, i'm not ready for yeah. what you want me to do sorry i'm gonna go <laughs> i'm gonna go this corner <laughs> and dick around for a bit more um yeah, still having lots of fun though. Still really good. Still, still just really, really good game. I'm trying to think. I had some other complaints as well, but I can't really. Well, for one, I bought this Pro Controller. This is not Zelda's fault at all, but I bought this Pro Controller because the Joy-Cons are naff and they have stick drift. And I already have stick drift on this brand that's new Pro mad. Controller. That's mad. That's mad. Is... I was going to say, that surprised me because I've had mine for like a couple years, like two, three, yeah. four, five years now. And I use mine daily and it gets battered and beaten. 
And mine works perfectly fine. Yeah, my, my experience my, is the same as yours, Steve. My pro controller yeah. gets beaten and it's my main use thing. And well, it's that's, just I can only assume I've got a duff one, so I'm going to yeah. return it or something. Because it's at the moment, it's um, it, he's constantly walking. It's pulling down on the left stick, so he's constantly walking towards the camera. So you'll be like trying to do something, <laughs> stick something to something else and make a go-kart. And then I realize he's like slowly walking away from what I'm trying to do. Uh, and I'm like, oh, yeah. fuck it. It's so annoying, man. It's so annoying. <laughs> I think um, now that I've played a bunch more, um, one big complaint I have is I think the fuse mechanic and sort of the UI around that is pretty not great. Um, it always feels like a really complicated ball ache to try and put something on an arrow mid-fight yeah. or just to put something on, something specific in my inventory on a weapon specifically yeah. i find really yeah. hard i have to go for the menu find what i want which is fine pick it up drop it in the world then unless i'm doing something wrong then change to the weapon that i want to fuse it to then activate fuse it all just seems a bit like i don't know a bit cumbersome i feel like a lot of the i i think this is just the limit of like how much they want you to be able to do at any one moment yeah. versus how many buttons your average switch controller has and because sometimes it gets especially in combat where i'm like i'd like to change weapon and it's like oh well you have your bow out so first you need to put that away. yes and it's like, okay yeah. and then i okay now i need to change weapon it's like, okay yeah yeah and then he gets his weapon and like i just yeah same with like uh you try and attach something to an arrow mid fight and it's like you're gonna make me scroll through one I, at a I time have, every so, single item in my so inventory. many items i have so many it is insane sometimes how far i have to scroll to look yes, for to look yes. for what I want because um, the area I was just in, without like spoiling too much, the enemies are weak to lightning. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, and around the air, around that sort of location, it gives you items that make weapons and arrows lightning, which is cool. Yeah. Um, and you can sort of set up and things for that until like suddenly I think of doing something cool. I jump like in midair. I pull out the bow. Time slows down. And I want to make an electric arrow, and there's like a minute of going through the entire, trying to find this one fucking thing to turn it into yeah. a lightning arrow. Yeah, um, yeah. Like Alex in chat just put sort by most used. I've hardly used it because it's like a new, it's like new-ish. So I'm trying to like yeah. find it, and I'm I'm sort of scooting past electric fans and <laughs> <laughs> like fire flowers. I'm like, where's this fucking? It's like links yeah. going through his pockets in midair, <laughs> trying to find the correct thing. Pulling out all this <laughs> change, jump, like change yeah, and literally, buttons. Literally, literally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's, but then it's like on the other hand, I would be really disappointed if it didn't let me attach like yes, a random yeah. mushroom to my arrow and shoot it at someone just to see what it does. Yeah, like, I, I don't know how you would. I don't know what uh, the effective solution yeah. to this is, unless you do some kind of thing where it's like, okay, in this situation, he is most likely going to want an electric arrow. You could do like soft recommendations or something. Yes. Or yeah, yeah. Like yeah. if I, if I'm aiming at a fire monster. And I'm trying to make an arrow. I'm, I might not be, but I'm probably going to want something water or ice related. Probably. Yeah, I could see mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, but that's Would like that's hell. That's like that's the shit we go crazy for in the next Zelda game. Like, oh my god, they've done it! Because that's like, <laughs> well, yeah. Did uh, uh, you talk about like the like the bow arrow, the arrows and stuff? There is an option to sort by like most used, which is. Yeah, Alex just said. But we said yeah. like if if you want to try something new and you or you have an idea of what you want to do and it's not mm -hmm. what you normally do, then you yeah. have to go and find it in this yeah. one it's long like, it's, list. It's like my my most used arrow is the one to attach fire like, arrow. It's not it's, it's fires up there, but the, I think the most used one is the one that creates light for the camera. Oh, I, down oh of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, I, yeah. I didn't waste those. I just throw those. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, we found out you can just throw them after a while. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 regardless of if, whether you can throw them or not. That's what I mean. You see, that's what I mean. It's like you just missed a shrine somewhere that taught you you could just yeah. throw those. And it's like... No, yeah, I've been shooting arrows with those. You've been wasting arrows. Arrows in Zelda are like more valuable than anything else we've found so yeah, far. I, it's I, like I, every time we show up in town, dump all the rupees into arrows, invest in arrows. We're up to like 500. We're not stopping. I, I feel <laughs> like gonna... I have tons of arrows. And I'll be like, oh, it's fine. I get really like loose with them. I'm just like going around like arrow, arrow, arrow. And I have none. And then I'm broke for ages. 
and then all of a sudden everything flying swarms me because it real like, the game realizes I've got no fucking arrows. <laughs> okay, here's another thing I would like to complain about. Yeah. Um, for the most part, I feel like they've done a really good job of refreshing the map because it's the same map as before. Yeah. And most of the time, I'm like, I'm not recognizing it because they've sc- sprinkled like new ruins all over it. Obviously, yeah. there's all the sky stuff and the underground as well. Um, but sometimes I like, I remember the snowboarding <laughs> quest from the first one. And. I was excited to see, like, hey, is this new? And I went over there, and it was, as far as I can remember, basically the same quest as the first game. <laughs> and I was like, B, you could have done a little fun of it here. And I've had that a couple times where, like, um, remember the tribe in the first one where they, like, it, it, someone will be, it, it's like an ambush. They'll be like, help, I need help. Oh, and you go no, over, yeah, and they're like, they're oh, they're fuck you up. Huge clan um, or something. Exactly. And, I, and that exact scenario played out exactly the same again you know where yeah. like me and Aaron were playing we walked up to a woman and she's like can you help me i need can you find my friend they're down here help me and we were like she's gonna try and she's gonna try and kill us <laughs> and it's like sure enough it's and it it's it's something i don't understand is this supposed to have taken place after breath of the wild i assume so it's like yeah. a direct sequel but it feels like none of the events of breath of the wild counted do or anyone even mean. remembers yeah. I, I I had that exact same thought when someone from that like ninja clan jumped me. I yeah. think like in my head, I was just like, "Oh, we're we're, we're still doing this. They still hate me." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, "This is this just we're doing this again? Just this one thing? Like yeah. you couldn't have?" Yeah, I, I, I have seen like... I have seen a few interesting spins on that throughout the world. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Maybe I've just not seen those. Yet. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. It's it's not. When I say crazy spins, it's not like you know anything outlandish, but. Um, yeah, yeah. Like there's there's been a couple of people that I've seen walking the path, um, mm-hmm. and I've gone and spoken to them, expecting that, and they're just like, "Hey, what's up? Just walking." <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, "Okay, <laughs> have a good day." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think because because for the most part, it's really really. It, I I don't notice that it's the same map as last time, but I think that makes it stick out when it when I do see something. Yeah. Um, that's I, almost identical to the first game. I'm like, oh, come on, go on, guys. Well, you could have, yeah, could have tried to chase some of it here. No, I, th- I think it's for me. I don't. I honestly don't remember a lot of Breath of the Wild. A, 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 like a few things stick out. Um, mm. Like when I go to a big named location, I'm like, I remember this. Like you know, vaguely. Yeah. But for the most part, the itty bitty bits, I don't really remember. Um, yeah. So I will say um, one. I don't even think it's a complaint because I feel like I'm playing the game how I should. Um, but the towers that shoot you up into the air, mm-hmm. uh, when you have enough stamina, I have like two and a half wheels now. Um, you can basically get to anywhere you want in the map by shooting up into the sky from the closest tower and. Sort of gliding flying there. there, and I feel like yeah. Am I? I feel like I'm not sure if I'm playing the game wrong, but I feel like I'm just missing stuff. It's it it, it sort of because the start of the game it feels like a really great adventure where you're like exploring and climbing things just to see what's up there and stuff. And then I already feel like in most parts of the map, it's like I'm just doing the checklist where I'll just like shoot up in the air, ah, shrine, zip straight to it, do that, and then it's yeah. like, well, am I gonna? Boring, or would it be more efficient to just teleport back to the tower, zip up again, and look for somewhere else? Yeah, I, I do. I do feel yeah. like that you had um, in Breath of the Wild, it was so amazing because you you know you you were always feet on the ground, right? More or less, unless you were gliding off a cliff or something. You yeah, were, you were feet on yeah. the ground, and you were limited by what you could see on the horizon. Whereas I think this game is really great because you can see everything all at once, and you get a, an amazing sense of scale really early on. Yes, where you can yeah. see everything. Which I think mm. both is a double-edged sword because it's so amazing. You can see everything and you can see the scale, but it's also kind of like, oh, I can, I can see everything. <laughs> yeah, like yes, yeah. yeah. It's not that the mystery's gone, <laughs> and it, but it's just like, oh, I can see that there's like a massive cool thing over there, a massive cool thing over there, a massive cool thing. Instead of yeah, instead of going like from point. From going from point A to B to C to D, like you would in Breath of the Wild, because you're taking this natural path over mountains i feel like you go in the sky and you can see all the points all at once and you pick instead of taking that path a b c d e you go i want to do d first 
and then you just go yeah. straight to D. I don't know. Again, I don't know if that's <laughs> better or worse. It's just different. I think. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's it's tough because like I've never even describing that. It's like I'm still having so much fun doing yes. all this stuff. Yeah. It's not, but I feel, I do feel like it's lost something when I feel like the most efficient way to explore is either use a tower or spawn at a shrine that's on the sky islands and then just fly somewhere. Like you can even, like we've been just been, you go up, you spawn a glider, hop on and just like, hey, here I go, I'm off. <laughs> yeah. And you just go, yeah, where am I going to end up? Like, and that feels like the most, and it's not really engaging when you're just flying about everywhere. No, it's, it's cool. It's, it's certainly cool. I do think it's, it's really cool. cool. And making rocket powered gliders is never not fun never yeah. not hilarious like it's awesome I, but i think though with this game because it is breath of the wild again like we've like you don't want to be like oh i've climbed this mountain before i'm gonna climb it like, you know yeah like oh yeah. i hope it's not raining today so i think because it is a direct sequel and they have changed the map a lot but it is still the same landmarks a lot of, yeah. sometimes like you don't want to be doing like the same like they can't super duper like now rather than spawning like lower mid of the map you spawn directly in the middle of the map you're still probably going to be uh, like accessing these areas the same way like the same bridge the yeah. same path yeah. so i do think that the, the the sky towers and the the islands do kind of freshen it up considering it is not absolutely like ab 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 oh absolute, yeah yeah, yeah. I'm not, yeah. I, I think i'm not complaining in any yeah, way, no, no, I, th I, I, th I think it's it's actually super interesting because I think you mm. have to do something like this because otherwise there wouldn't be yeah. a purpose to reuse this map at all. Um, I could yeah. see them for the next game if, as long as they're not doing like Breath of the Wild three. I could see them again. You get in that sense of exploration because it will be like completely all brand new again. Yeah, they have to. Yeah, yeah I, I I don't think you can get away with doing this map again. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think we could see something similar, like um, gameplay-wise, in that it's um, you know all these game mechanics and physics interacting with each other. I think that's like Zelda going forward, basically. Like, like this is it now. I think they have said there was a new story yeah. this week or something. It was like th this is Zelda now going yeah. forward, and I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine with that. I, they, I don't think they can use this map again. Yeah. Um, do like Fortnite and flip it over. Do like a <laughs> like new like, new map. Well, I think it's, that's what I wasn't expecting was um, the depths to be as substantial as they are. And like I've been exploring that a little bit, and I'm like, I think I like this better than just exploring the world again because it's it, it feels like you're limited again, and mm -hmm. everything feels dangerous, and you're sort of yeah hampered by like light, which is a Very weird interesting mechanic, yeah. Mechanic, yeah, yeah. Wait, you know they're going to do Breath of the Wild three now. It's underwater. Oh god! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just depths again. It's yeah, just even lower. Go, There's another cave. You go even lower. Plus, you can go into space. <laughs> you go into space. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, that sounds like a galaxy. Awesome. There we go. Koroks with little astronaut helmets. Um, on. I'll ship it. But yeah, <laughs> I don't know, this game's it's fun as shit. Yeah, it's really fun. <laughs> it like it's. I want to. I want to talk about it. Like. Hey, his I do have some problems. It's not a perfect game because I I feel like the uh, discourse around this game is so over the top. I guess is the word I would use. Where it's like I've seen videos where they're like Zelda should be Tears of the Kingdom should be impossible on the Switch. And I'm like, okay, all right, they've already done it. Cool your jets, <laughs> Jesus! It's Zelda again. They've done it before. I do um, still think um, I do still think it is by far the best thing to come out this year. So far, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, what else has come out this year? Well, Street Fighter 6 isn't out yet, but that's oh, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've got Diablo <laughs> coming out, like, yeah, or you'll have the it uh, is very interesting to see the chatter about this game because I'm never sure if people are just happy that they've got another Breath of the Wild game. I think Breath of the Wild aside, people are always excited for like a Zelda game. Mm. Like Zelda nah, just turns Zelda I, turns. I, Zelda's I, always turned heads for decades. Yes, yes, yes. But I feel like we're almost at a point now where there are Zelda fans and there are Breath of the Wild fans, and those two can be the same thing. But I feel like Breath of the Wild was so big 
Yeah. I can see that, yeah. That I th- I think this is the case of you know when people go, just just do that, but again, but <laughs> I'm I'm gonna use quote unquote better. Uh, honestly, all I ever see is this fusing mechanic. I swear that the, if that mechanic wasn't in the game, I I don't know if this game would be the like nine or, out of ten that everyone that, thinks is that fusing mechanic. Fusing Ultra Hand. I'm gonna put it all in one. That is the game. Like, like yeah, this, this, that's what I mean. Basically, yeah, yeah. This this game yeah. wouldn't exist without it because Nintendo wouldn't. Re- you know, I I feel like it took them what like six years to make. This game, I guarantee a lot of early R and D when they decided they wanted to reuse the same kingdom was like, what can we do that actually makes it worthwhile coming back to the same location? Oh yeah, no, yeah. A- a- absolutely. And I'm, I'm not trying to undersell yeah, it. I'm yeah. just saying, like, normally, whenever you have a game where people are going, yeah, we're just going to do what we did before again, it it's <laughs> never, it never lives up, right? It never lives up to yeah. the hype. It's, it's never as good as the previous game. Whereas this seems to be one that has stuck the landing, people are saying is as good, if not better, than Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Um, well, it, it's but... kind of a unique case, right? Where this is almost, I think you said it last week, Josh, when you were like, this is kind of Breath of the Wild, but like fully realized instead. Like, yeah. You can almost think of Breath of the Wild was just Tears of the Kingdom Early point, access. Point, point 0.5, you know, at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this just feels like, oh, they. This is what this is it. This is for the finished this thing. Is, this is yeah. It's, it's the whole. It's the whole package fully realized until yeah, yeah. the next game comes out, and then that. Oh my god, that is the full package. <laughs> realized. Which I guess is a good <laughs> a good thing to have. A good problem to have. Yeah, I think I think but, them... I still think also this game is still showing as as good as it looks. It is still showing the limitations of the Switch. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I am a hundred percent. After watching all of these like clips online of people making fun mechanic, uh, like machines and things, I am convinced all of those people are emulating and playing <laughs> at sixty FPS on a you know twenty eighty or whatever. Because my game does not look like that. It does not yeah. run mm-hmm. that well. Yeah, my I st- game I st- slows down if I move something too fast. <laughs> I still don't think it's the perfect game. I still think it looks fine. Like for what yeah, it's it looks trying great. to do, yeah. I, 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 is is a better switch needed at this point? Probably, but this is the yeah. best. The, uh, the best video, how how old is the switch? Uh, or Breath of the Wild is six, six years. <laughs> six years. So is it only six? Oh, okay, in that case, it's still got. Yeah, we, we need the switch two point Well, they came out and said yeah. last year in twenty twenty two that they were like, yeah, we're about halfway through. Our expected life cycle. Yeah. Oh, at which point yeah. everyone was like, "Oh, fucking no, please." Yeah. <laughs> this this it, it can't last. Yeah. Well, and I it's... say that because there are so many games that I know are going to come out and be Switch exclusive, and I'm going to want them. Yeah. I, I don't even know they exist yet. I don't know what games these are, but I know <laughs> that they'll come out in the next four or five years. And I'm yeah. gonna be like, well, that's a fucking instant buy. They've got me, ain't they? Persona Three but remake, then... Switch only. <laughs> but I'm not gonna buy it because <laughs> yes, you I, will. I can... no, honestly, any game comes out for the Switch right now, I'm not buying it. Full stop. That's, I'm not yeah, buying any more games that's for fair. the Switch. Mm. It's a waste of money. Yeah, yeah. I've seen yeah. people take a hard stance with this as well, where I've I've seen people saying, nope, I'm not. You know, I'm not playing it, I'm not buying it, Switch is terrible. Um, on the flip side, I've seen a lot of people on my Discord uh, friends list just booting up <laughs> Yuzu emulator and just being like, <laughs> yeah, I'm playing Yuzu. So, uh, yeah. It's, you know, it's neither here nor there. Yeah, but yeah. I think it, a, lot people, a, lot of people, uh, a lot of people share your frustrations. Myself included. You know, I would love... It, it does make you think, I know, I know it's like in some ways, it feels like the limitations are like how they get so creative with what they make. Nintendo, that is. Um, but it does. You kind of like, oh, if they had the horsepower of like a full, like <laughs> and a, like an, a real console, <laughs> what it's, could they? Come it's up literally. With, yeah? It's it's literally like you play this, or I'm you know playing right now. I'm like, this looks alright. This doesn't look actually that bad. This looks quite nice. And then I boot up like God of War Ragnarok, and I'm just like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and then that oh, yeah. you, you just put up anything exclusive on the PS5 or whatever. It's just like, oh, for Christ's sake! It's fu- it, it is funny because like 
I had spending, so I spent, you know, 60 pounds on this game, 50 pounds on a pro controller. So I had like almost buyer's remorse, like hours of the game where <laughs> it started. I was playing and I was like, oh, this doesn't look good and it doesn't run good. And the controls are like <laughs> Tokyo <laughs> drifting everywhere. Oh, all right. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, and I'm like, what have I done? But yeah, you do. You, no, you get into it. Yeah. <laughs> It's not a yeah. big deal. Nintendo know that they've got everyone by the fucking balls at this point. Yeah. It's just yeah. like, we know our Switch is not great anymore. Oh, here's Tears of the Kingdom. Teehee. Sells like <laughs> 50 million copies day one because it's a yeah. really good game. Yeah. It's like Christ's yeah. sake. They've just made a really good game. The bastards. The absolute bastards. They're going to do it again with Pikmin 4 <laughs> as well. It's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to push this along a bit, but um, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is this is yeah. Well, I've I won't have a section this week because I've just been playing this basically. So. How are we going to talk about Zelda for? We, we do we just need to like update where we are and what we're doing in Zelda for the next couple of weeks? Yeah, we'll do it. Like, uh, remember when we talked about Elden Ring for like six weeks? <laughs> oh yeah, uh, and we you, were, say, you uh, say that we've got some big releases coming out though. So every single it's like right at the start of the podcast. I'm pretty sure it was like episode ten or something for like six weeks. It was like well. Little update on Elden Ring. Won't talk about it much because we've talked about it every week and we talk about it for like 40 minutes oh. again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, okay, no more. I'm going to push us along. Push us along. Okay. Um, this is a big news story actually from last week, but we missed it just about due to the day that it was. We've... It happened in at like yeah. 10 minutes as we were wrapping up. We normally record on Wednesdays. Last week we recorded on a Tuesday. So we did actually got asked this, like, why did we skip over it? We didn't. We just missed it. This is the Overwatch 2 Um long promised flagship PVE mode being completely mm. scrapped. Um yeah, everyone went crazy with this. Fucking piss. It is, uh, it is ridiculous, but we'll we'll try and break it down. Did you have something to say quickly, Steve? I was gonna say like uh yeah they 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 have put out a statement since being like the story mode stuff yeah. is still coming. Like the, the 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 story missions are still coming. It's the repeatable talent trees, the the you can play this forever mode that's been scrapped. Yeah, so... Okay, we'll try and break it down. So, yeah, so Overwatch 2, um, when first announced, was going so, to have a big PvE mode. Yeah, go. Sorry, no, no, you go, you explain. Okay, yeah. Big PvE mode. Um, as Steve just said, it was going to have... And there's actual, like, footage and gameplay and mm -hmm. screenshots. Um Every character is going to have talent trees that fundamentally changed the way they played and their abilities worked. Um, you would level them up um, inside missions and outside missions, meta progression, story modes, um, a whole bunch of interesting mm -hmm. um, characters, and you know all this stuff going on. Um, but the idea is that when Overwatch 2 came out, this mode wasn't ready. They did the multiplayer. Overwatch 2 multiplayer was just the same as the first one, but with a little bit of a shake-up in player count and stuff. And they kept mm -hmm. saying, this PvE mode, it's coming. You know, it's it's just not ready yet, but it is coming. Um, and now it's just been completely scrapped. They've come forward and said, well, not all of it's gone. We are still doing some very light PvE elements, um, but nothing on the scale as what was originally planned and promised, mm -hmm. um, stating that they couldn't keep up with development on a live service multiplayer game and a PVE game at the same time. That's which, the that's the breakdown. Which is honestly, it's bullshit. It's, <laughs> it's kind of a joke. Like m during Overwatch One development, it was like they would release a character every now and then, but for the most part, what they did was they would release a holiday event. And then the next year they'd release it again. The same, like very much the same stuff with maybe like a few minor tweaks. And it was always like, what are they doing? Then it was like, Overwatch 2 is coming out. We've been working on all this PvE stuff. I was like, oh, that's what they've been doing. And now it's like, we've had Overwatch 2 for what, like a year? Not a year. It's been like, I was like year? six months, maybe. I, yeah. And it's like, what's time? <laughs> what? Where's all the work? Like you said, like, oh, we, we need to to work on stuff it's like what are you doing though like you very rarely release new maps you very like you release a new character every now and then like every other season for all your battle pass but what yeah. are you actually doing well, i think the, the, <laughs> the, 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 the key thing that's happened to blizzard over the last whatever however long it's been since overwatch one came out is you've mm -hmm. had global pandemic and also 
I feel like it's a lot of it's been very public, but obviously there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Blizzard has kind of, I feel like, been imploding from the inside out as well for such a long time. You know, with all the um, the um, stories about internal politics and all, yeah. the, all the shitty stuff that was happening at Blizzard and this, that, and the other. Um, I feel like Blizzard was just in like a really bad spot. It's no like excuse or whatever. Um, but I also I've... went through a stage of trying to work out, yeah, how does this actually happen? Mm-hmm. Um, what you so say, I yeah. watched a video actually the other day. Yeah, I think I think it was yesterday. I had a long train journey yesterday, <laughs> um, and it was basically going over WTF happened with Overwatch Two. Yeah, and generally the consensus was this is purely a management issue. This this isn't yeah. like oh the the people working on it like are lazy or not good enough or anything like that. It's mm. people keep getting moved onto different projects, moved about, management's fucking up, um, and like <clears throat> management are basically telling the people like you know when like they get a dev to say something like oh yeah we're we're working on something or we're really looking forward to this and it's like that's. They're not saying that. They've been told to say that kind of deal. Um, and there's just been a massive like exodus as well of like really experienced They lost people a lot Blizzard. of staff. Yeah, I know that. A lot of people just straight up, up Yeah, so walked. they kept... Um, I think the, the quote was like, oh, we've, we've doubled or we've tripled the amount of people on the team. But it's all no offence, new people and just because they're on the team doesn't mean they're working on the same things. Well, it's, it's, mm. like, it's, no, it's like no offence there, it's like whenever you join a new project, you know, as a new person, anything that's complicated, it's any kind of software or games, it takes a yeah. long time to reach yes. your maximum it's, efficiency at making whatever you're it's, making. It's almost like when you hire new people into a studio like this, it's almost like you're taking a, a short term hit to yes. productivity because like you'll need to train this person and they're not going to know what's going on but eventually it will you know accelerate pay and they'll pay it'll pay off and they'll be really they'll be an asset um yeah that's why a lot of these companies so like, and software development in general put a lot of time and money into actively training staff yeah um mm -hmm. because the you like you say the payoff in the end is you you get someone that just works at peak efficiency on whatever it is they're working on because they understand what they're working on and it takes like it's like it's no short time like it can take sometimes you know up to like half a year to get yeah. fully on board and up to speed with just yes. knowing how code works your art asset pipeline you know all these complicated things um but yeah and you're losing all your experienced people that yes. would be able to train these new people yeah and like Again, you, you're you're not an indie company where you've got like a. I don't want to say like oh they can take all the time they want, but like you know in indie games I feel like big indie games are like yeah we've been working on this for like four years or something. Triple A games are like no we these are the deadlines. This is what you will hit, and if you don't crunch, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's like you're pushing that on people that can't they're unable to perform there yeah I, but i guess the yeah. the big question though is is like this seems like it was just ill planned from the start like from the very it's... first jeff kaplan gets up on stage and says overwatch 2 we're doing pve it's we're very excited and it's like did it just never got out of like planning Apparently, into a so playable you know state when jeff kaplan left right yeah uh, apparently this he i think there was a quote being out there somewhere where he was like yeah the pv thing he just knew wasn't going to happen that's when he quit yeah, but yeah that because, was a while ago because the problem with it is is which is a lot what a lot of people are focusing on like rightly so is without a pve mode there is kind of no reason for overwatch 2 to really exist yeah no, because the because they it's just everyone it's, Oh, it's it's not not tricked again. I think it's probably just <laughs> they can't keep getting away with it. No, I think it's 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 just like it's just obviously really bad planning over years and years. But obviously, people jump to the point 
why does it need to exist? It's just Overwatch 1 again. But then yeah. you can also point to the fact that now Overwatch 2 has a much more, I'm not sure if egregious is the right word, but a much more aggressive monetization strategy compared to Overwatch 1, which makes people go, yeah. does Overwatch 2 actually only really exist to squeeze more money out of a game that already existed? Cause yeah, it, it's weird because like everyone was up in arms with their watch being like the loot boxes are bad, the loot boxes are bad, and it's like okay, loot boxes now... in comparison. With <laughs> generous... We didn't know how good we had yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> I know the, the the Overwatch ones were still bad, but compared to this though, or or this is now so Overwatch Two is now the normal free to play monetization strategy, which is battle passes mm-hmm. with twenty pound premium skins. Um, yeah. Which is expensive, but that's just normal in that you know area of competitive gaming. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, there's no there's no reason for Overwatch two to exist. It is yeah the same um, multiplayer from Overwatch one. I said the same multiplayer as in you know it's the same mechanics, same character shooting and that five v five instead of six v six, and what a push pull game mode. But we lost they, they a, did the but we lost update. Graphi- a very minor graphics update that mm-hmm. other yeah. games would just do for free anyway, but whatever. Um, yes, another thing I remember him saying was, um, you know the whole, like, PV mode had their own talent trees and stuff? Yes. Uh, uh, some of the lead devs said it would have been easier to make an entire roster of 20 to 30 new characters than it is to make eight characters with this new talent tree. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. easier to make a character for PvP in multiples than it was to try and make this talent tree that makes all these characters feel different and do different things. Apparently yeah. it's just like was an impossible thing. Well it is because it's like so you it's know like, take take you tra- sorry you go. I was gonna say you could have literally just doubled the roster count on Overwatch One. Yeah, I'm not I I'm I'm not saying the work for PvE wouldn't have been hard. It's just like why promise something that you knew oh, yeah. you, oh, couldn't, you couldn't deliver in the first place. Because yeah, you take Tracer and you know, you take her guns and make them single fire instead of rapid fire, and now she can teleport. I don't know differently or some shit. And it's like you've just that's like creation wise of coding and stuff. That's that's a new character basically. You you know you got to mm-hmm. make that all work. You got to balance it. This that and the other. Yeah, the whole it's the whole situation is just really shit. Uh, um, I was gonna say Blizzard haven't had the as we all know Blizzard haven't had the best PR recently. And this to me is like I like as soon as I heard that it was like I had Overwatch installed, like I was like, oh, I play on occasion, like very, very rarely, but still as soon as I heard this, I was like, like I can't be bothered, like I uninstalled it and I'm just like when they announced that we weren't getting the PvE mode, they should have had something big like ready to be like, but we got this, focus on this, you know. Oh that's just making me remind me of another uh, quote. Which was um, another reason why they started pulling resources from Overwatch 2 was because Diablo Immortal was making like 2 million a day and that's the business model they wanted. Well yeah, that's the business model model I want. (laughs) I'm just getting... Yeah. (laughs) I'm just getting so mad. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I can't imagine somebody on the board of Actiblis and they're like looking at these two projects where it's like, you know, the Overwatch people come up and they're like, hello, we need more resources to... uh, to make our PvE mode, and then it's like they're looking at this money drain that is Overwatch Two versus yeah. the absolute hose, the fire hose of cash <laughs> that Diablo Immortal is, and it's like you just make that, oh, just do that. <laughs> What's Fine, wrong with you? we'll pull the plug. <laughs> it it really like it, it sucks because Blizzard, like in the past, it felt like oh, this was like nerds making games for nerds. And like just like in the past ten years or so, it's just felt like oh nope, it's corporation, corpo decision. What makes the most money? What 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 is the you know gonna give us better numbers for the year for the fiscal year or whatever? And it yeah. just feels like that like nerds making games for nerds has been lost. Well, they've all moved on really to sucks. smaller studios like the all people the, that yeah, made StarCraft making 2 their own. have gone off to make uh, not StarCraft. Oh yeah, yeah. I literally I can't wait for that game, and I've already forgotten its name. No, uh, it's, Storm, it's, it's Stormgate or something. It's not had much. It, it's not had much push yet. To be fair Stormgate. to us, um, 
mm-hmm. question to the three of you, um, as someone that's not as invested, I feel, does any of this make you actually worry about Diablo 4? Because it does me. <laughs> um, not Diablo 4, because it's too close. I mean, I, lo- I long-term know. Diablo I'm... 4, though. I'm maybe a bit worried, yeah, because I'm, I'm like, is this gonna? Because like, someone linked a video recently of being like them saying battle pass like twenty million times. Yeah, shop, shop, interview. shop, shop, battle pass, battle pass, battle pass. Shop, Whereas shop. D- Diablo three didn't have that. Like that's old, so it ma- right? Yeah, so I'm just like, it's Diablo four. Like we, ha- I thought Diablo Immortal was meant to be like that was the money one that was the money diablo i thought diablo 4 was going to be like diablo 3 where it's just like yeah you got the game you have seasons uh they only really monetized that game like of course it had the real money auction house at the start but that's gone now but the the only monetization for that game was the dlc right the necromancer and the expansion yeah like bigger expansions yeah. so is is so it's like, uh, like i i literally feel like diablo 4 could come out and they do something really egregious in it, and everyone's mm-hmm. like, "What the fuck?" And you just sit here, like, "Are you a- are you actually surprised?" Like with the, the, yeah. the recent track record of like Overwatch Two, Diablo Immortal, Blizzard being kind of crappy for ages and ages. Like, is it is it actually surprising? I I, I feel like at this point, though, like Blizzard's kind of like killing itself. I would love for like. But I know are, it's probably never going to happen. But are they? If they're making well, a I, shitload of money from all these well, other games, they're, they're losing their heart. Like I was a big Blizzard fanboy. Yeah. I think a lot of us were. They're losing their like core dedicated fan base. Are they though? But like, I Diablo feel like four comes you're, out. You're about to buy Diablo four, it. yeah? You no, know, we we are all that. But if uh, Diablo, Steve's already up. bought Diablo four. Please. Oh yeah, <laughs> Shut up. the big um, one too. You know, but like if if Diablo messes up, it's like. Can't, like, come oh, on! Like, I, mean, I'm, 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 I think Diablo would have to fuck up hard because we all played the beta, and I thought the beta was pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I, but I, I, agree. I was I was worried before the beta, and then I played the beta, and I was like, yeah, I don't know, it's fun. It's yeah, Diablo. I'm, I'm not saying it will be bad. I'm just saying if something did yeah. turn out funny, would you be surprised? Like, if they if they take away the PvP yes. again, I'm gonna be like, mm. oh, oh, that, that that I wouldn't care about. Um, but <laughs> but no, but you know, something like that. I think it'll, it'll just, be it'll be like um, not the launch of the game. Like the campaign will be fine. Um, mm-hmm. Shop and battle pass will be, kind of will be fine. Yeah, shop and battle pass yeah. will be fine. Like season one, and then like when it starts getting into a groove, and then like next season is kind of where they they've, they trickle something yeah. and be like, oh, by the way, power up with this or some shit. Because they've talked a, an absolutely crazy game about um, how there's going to be like new story content every every two or three months or something insane yeah um and, and i'm like well <laughs> someone's got to pay for said, it <laughs> you talked a big game about overwatch's two overwatch 2's pv oh, I see what you're saying, and that's yeah. just never materialized so i i wonder if it's like is the is the new blizzard thing to like over promise and then when it's too hard just pull the plug and just yeah, yeah. whatever it, <laughs> it could can, be yeah it cannot be surprising anymore if they promise something and literally be like no it's cancelled because they've done yeah. it, they've done it, they've already done it. I was really excited for Overwatch Two PVE. I wasn't, Same. wasn't raving about were it. You every all, day. Were you all? Right? Are you? You were all. All three of you. You were all really. Because I read this and I was like, I, I not. I am not shocked in the slightest. This hasn't materialized. Oh, I, 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 I just want to make it very clear that I am devastated that there is no single single player uh, thingy. I'm. I'm not surprised there isn't. Yeah, right. I'm just devastated it now doesn't exist. I was gonna say because Blizzard always in the like, again Blizzard always in the past had a way of like you may or may not agree, but like to me they always had a way of like making a twist on things to make it engaging. Like Hearthstone's like three modes, uh, flagship modes are. Uh, I enjoyed them all. Heroes of the Storm, I really enjoyed. Like they always had a way of making. Yeah, true, true. Making these modes engaging. So I was like, oh, I'm excited to see how they're gonna make a PV like the PVE mode engaging to me because oftentimes i fall off of those like type of modes very quickly yeah because i the only thing i was thinking is um there was that video that came out about uh around the time well it was like a couple months ago around the time the pve people started rumbling about like oh where is it and stuff and that guy Mm -hmm. and he was saying stuff like destiny raids and it's gonna be like this and i'm like are people sad that 
this got cancelled, or are they sad that the sort of fantasy <laughs> version I'm, of Overwatch I'm, 2's yeah. PvE mode got cancelled? I'm, sa- like, I'm sad that the potential of what it could have been will never be realised, yeah. because in my mind, I wasn't exactly 100% sure what Overwatch 2 PvE was going to be, but I knew yeah. it would have been fun. And it would have it sounded been, exciting. And it sounded yeah. cool. I, I, I also just want more Blizzard told stories. Because exactly. they do, yeah. they do hit normally <sighs> quite well. Yeah, they especially put the in, they? <laughs> their cutscenes, uh, cinematic, um, what are they called Sh- like shorts, I guess. Yeah, you know they're like two to three minute, tra- not trailers, but little stories. Yeah, they still said that uh, will yeah. continue, but just not in the big capacity that was going to be. Yeah, but this. I'm not going to be as invested because no, there's true, yeah. less story to follow. That that's I'm a story guy. I can't help it. Yeah, but... and that was like Overwatch's one big complaint was it's like they really did it. Like when it first came out, it was like, oh, this is really interesting world and law, and then like we got no story. Like we got the occasional <laughs> got like no cutscene. <laughs> Oh well, we yeah, we got the trailer. Like there was meant to be a book, and I was like, I was like, I was gonna buy that book, and then they were like, nope, we cancelled the book. And then it's like oh, we got the, far, but... we got the cinematics uh, trailers, and we got the comics, and that was about it. And it was like, come on. And then they were like, Overwatch two, the gang's finally getting back together, and it's like we're gonna have the story. And it's like, yeah. And I know they said we're still getting the story, but it's like. If they're not doing, if they're, it's not going to be always tied in with the PV, like the repeatable PVE mode, it's like, is it going to be? Let's good? be honest. All the writers yeah. probably fucking left. To be honest, all yeah. the original writers. Mm. Well, it's it's not even that. It's like, are we going to get what we've had from like the is, is it the Overwatch Archive event where it's like a PVE mission which you just do once and that it's will, not that, will, that interesting. That will probably be what it is. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if you get like we are still doing PVE and it's just fucking junk and Stein again. Like who cares? Yeah. I'm gonna push this along now, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's it's shit. Sad. Basically, it's sad. Yeah, um, we'll do one more little news story before we wrap it up. We'll do the uh, Dead by Daylight one because that's got <gasps> some funny stuff yes. here. Um, Dead by Daylight recently celebrated its seventh anniversary. It's very cool. They showed a lot of stuff. A lot of it was leaked. <laughs> um, so they actually <laughs> what, what? they brought the event forward because yeah, a lot of it was leaked. Um, there's, you know, for people that don't play Dead by Daylight, some of it might not be interesting, but there's some, there is some funny stuff here. The biggest one everyone's talking about is uh, Nicolas Cage being a character that's coming to Dead by Daylight, which is, it's so mm. bizarre, but I absolutely love it. Hilarious. Um, well, it's funny because they have, they've sort of done this before. Like they've had Bruce Campbell in the game for a while, have, right? Yeah, As he's, Ash. Yeah. So it's not, it's not unheard of, but I guess Nick Cage is a bit of a pull. Even for I, them. I, well, it's kind I of weird because Nick Cage, for everyone, it was like, is he a villain or is he a <laughs> survivor? I <laughs> say so he's definitely a survivor. Yeah. Um, I think oh, the reason, yeah, that's disappointing. The reason it stands out, I think, is because yeah, you've got Evil Dead, Ash, but that's still a fictional character, whereas this is yeah. just, yeah. It's just Nick real Cage. Life person. Real life person. I mean, this could be the fictional character Nick Cage. Exactly. That was played by Nick Cage. But then even if even if that's the case, it is still I am still repairing yeah, a generator yeah. with Nicolas Cage. It's still yeah. it's it's I'm trying, to, <laughs> I'm trying to work out if they're putting in Nick Cage the actor or Nick Cage the character the actor. Yeah. <laughs> that's a very Nick Cage thing to do. Is that's it? why it's so funny, you know? Oh, yeah. When, it, when yeah. it first leaked, a lot of people were saying, like, oh my god, it's Nicolas Cage. Is he a survivor? Is he a killer? Oh my god, what if he's both? <laughs> and you, and oh, you... I wanted him to be both. Imagine. I don't yeah. know how they do that mechanically, I... but I thought that would have been hilarious. I don't know if I can hand, if I can handle a lobby of Dead by Daylight with four Nick Cages trying Five. to rep- trying to repair generators <laughs> against an evil Nick Cage. Yeah, running, like, <laughs> like Nicholas Cage from uh, the movie Mandy or something. Like he's all coked up and he's just got a big sword and he's just like, <laughs> yeah. It's you crazy. know that th- this is like basically he's going to be in the Dead by Daylight movie now. <laughs> basically confirmed. Oh my, I didn't even think about that. That's that's amazing. Yeah, he's Nick Nicholas Cage is now canon to the Dead by Daylight lore. Exactly. <laughs> Playing himself. It's too deep. <laughs> but yeah, I will be like I want to buy this character. Like where like it's worked. Good job. But I want to buy well, this. 
Oh, wait, do you think they'll get another actor to play Nicolas Cage in the <laughs> Dead by Daylight movie? <laughs> oh, we get a lookalike to play Nick, but he's like badly dubbed with, with Nicolas Cage's actual voice. We get Pedro mm. Pascal to play <laughs> Nicolas Cage. Oh my god, where does The one it end? thing is, is that every time I see Nick Cage, I just want more Ghost Rider. That's all that happens. No, you don't. You think you do, but you don't. No, I know, I do. Oh, I do. Um, I don't think you understand. The only person how much for I love Ghost Green Lantern. Rider. And I'm like one and yeah. one billion for wanting more Green Lantern. <laughs> yeah, it's like you and seven other people. <laughs> want yeah. more Ghost Rider. Uh, what else did we what? get? There's, there's also, um, there was the whole next chapter has been mm-hmm. announced. So Dead by Daylight, there's like chapters where they release a new uh, killer and a new survivor. Um, and it looks pretty cool after the last one being, I think, universally kind of a dud. Yeah. Um, no one this was a fan. This one's awesome. Of... Yeah, this one's like um, it's the first sci-fi theme they've yes. done in the game. It's really cool. It's a rogue AI. Um, that's kind of like half. How would you describe it? It's like half machinery, half, mutant, half... half yeah. yeah, half like fleshy weird shit. Um, yeah, it just looks really cool. Um, I've gone a bit deeper as well and looked at some of the perks for the killer and the survivor. There's some really good stuff there. Again, They're all really good, I thought. Yeah, the last well, again, the last update, not only was the characters kind of boring, but their gameplay stuff was kind of boring weak. as well. Yeah. yeah. Really weak. Whereas mm. this is like, the, some of the perks that these characters have are insanely good. Um, like meta building stuff. So, um mm-hmm. Yeah, um, another big. There's like there's tons of little stuff in here. There was a whole event like live stream they did, where they showed off upcoming costumes and stuff. Um, but the other big thing they did or announced are a few games uh, being made by other studios, but within yes. within the Dead by Daylight universe. The more one the one people are focusing on is the story one done by Supermassive Games. Cannot mm. wait! I love Supermassive Games. I cannot wait for this. Oh yeah, so Supermassive Games, um, Until Dawn, The Dark Pictures, yeah. The Quarry, um, decision making, campy horror games. It's almost like perfect, mm-hmm. right? It feels perfect. Exactly. Yeah. That feels like a yeah, like an easy. <laughs> they must have been do- talking about this for a long time. Yeah, I imagine. Yeah. So I don't know. Like, yes, yeah, some sort of game by them with just you know. Almost like a a cool like cabin in the woods kind of scenario. Like if anyone that's seen that movie, imagine in like a game, but like yeah, so, yeah. like four people not realizing they're all trying to survive against <laughs> the trapper, the hag, um, the shape, like all these killers, all in one game could be really cool. Um, although, like thinking about it as well, because they do the dark pictures, right, which are mm-hmm. a whole bunch of like smaller stories. They could do that with DBD and do mini games based on each killer. Oh, that's so cool. The more I think about it, that's really cool. That would be good. That would be good. Like, imagine you buy um, a set of games and they're three separate stories, but one is about the Huntress and then another one is about the Trapper and just stuff that like that. That could be fun. Yeah. There's tons of ways you could go with it. Um, you know, the only thing I worry about is, have you read the bios of the killers in <laughs> in in game in Dead by Daylight? Because they're not good. They're, they're not, not we can, good. We can we can retcon some of that. That's fine. That's, okay. that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the bigger parts of this announcement. They did they did a roadmap as well. But again, I'll bring it up if I can find it. Um, that's kind of like, you know, if you're yeah, into DVD, I, you've probably seen it already, I guess, like the, the next I will, 12 months. I will say, like, I have seen a lot of people be like, I'm getting back into DVD right now <laughs> because of the announcements. That's good. I, I think it's everyone's kind exciting, of excited. Yeah. yeah. Who knew this janky Frankenstein of a game would last this long and be thriving at this point? Yeah. You know? Crazy. It's, it's a live service, like, success story right yeah it's one of the ones people yeah. will point to and be like we could do a, like look at dbd that game was shit and now it's a live service that makes millions <laughs> like we can do that and then they can't do it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah that's the dbd story um we'll wrap this up now um very quickly a few more uh news stories really quickly or just one more really mm-hmm. um it was mortal kombat 1 was announced can't show this trailer on the video because it's very very gory <laughs> um but yeah, Mortal mm. Kombat 1 announced coming September, which is very soon. Um, 
I think it'll be good. I'm always a bit skeptical of <laughs> Warner Brothers. They're a bit sleazy. I just, I'd, I'd like them to drop this kind of style that they've adopted since, I guess, X? I guess since Mortal Kombat X? Or, or I don't know. I don't know how far back it goes. But, do you, like, I don't know. It, something about watching Street Fighter recently and then watching uh, some Mortal Kombat. And I'm always like, these characters look really stiff and awkward. They kind of look like action figures. And... Mortal Kombat's had um, animation problems for a very yeah. long time. And it's not a secret people there's lots of videos and breakdowns you can see of like yeah mortal yeah. Kombat is like they make animations but then sort of tweak them and adjust them to work with the correct frame data and it all just ends up looking a little bit odd very stiff like you yeah say. yeah um it's just the way they do things and it works very well for them these games sell <laughs> insane i guess amounts, yeah so i guess i'm not yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. Not, they're not gonna change i don't think also, um, not really for me, so I probably... No, yeah, I'll, yeah. Is, I'll is, is it normal, just, just to quickly ask this, is it normal to have a Mortal Kombat, a Tekken, and a Street Fighter come out all at the same Surprisingly, time? Surprisingly, yes. These things tend okay. to happen for some reason. Um, it's, that's just game dev cycles, right? I think it is, yeah. It's just they, they always end up roughly coming out around the same time. Usually, fighting games come out in the earlier part of the year, like around April. Mm. Um... But nevertheless, like they tend to come out around the same time period. So yeah, okay. so yeah, like Tekken, Mortal Kombat One, Street Fighter Six, it's all kind of happening at the same time. Just in so, my head, I'm like, surely, you, like I know you need to compete. You don't want one to just come out and be on its own and just easily capture the market. I think, but I'm like, yeah. surely you don't want to all fight at the same time. I think, but I think fighting game players love playing Marvel. They games, do. So. Yeah, I was gonna say like I don't think that's a problem for people yeah. that enjoy these games. It's just like sick. I'm gonna play them all. <laughs> no, I just I, I think it probably hurts the casual player base because yeah. the casual is only gonna pick one of these. I mean, it's know? out. It's out far yeah, enough. But... I think that you know, Street Fighter is in like what, like two weeks, if not that, like a week yeah. and a half. This is September, mm -hmm. so there's a bit of time. Yeah, I'm just you know. Yeah. Uh, I have no facts or figures. I just it so, feels weird. But that does mean Soul Calibur Nine or whatever one it is that should be announced any day now. Then that game, that series is dead. I will... Is it? Is it? <laughs> I, 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 for some reason, I don't feel like I'm not going to see a Soul Calibur game for a long time. I don't know how well the really? last one sold. For some reason, in my head, it's just because I don't play them. So I'm biased. Well, the last one, all I ever saw of it was the make your own character mode. Who, yeah. um, who is Soul Calibur? Uh, Namco Bandai? Namco. Okay. Is it? Maybe? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, 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 look, I'm Googling. You're the fighting game guy. Just in my head, I'm like, we've got a PlayStation. It is, it is Namco. <laughs> yeah, it is Namco. Bandai Namco. Yeah. Anyway, we've, we've got to start wrapping this up because we've got um, the PlayStation thing soon. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's all the news stories. Steve, what's very, very quickly, um, what's the most important things that are coming out next week? Okay, well, it's only a short list anyway. Um, on tomorrow, the 25th, we have Lord of the Rings Gollum. Oh, God. It's not coming out. It's not coming out. Fake game. That's There's still time. Tomorrow. They can cancel it. I really want to try this game. <laughs> I requested a key, but I'm like, I looked at the price. It's £50. Okay. I'm like, I'm not paying £50. I will pay day. £50 not to be Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> too, too bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, this game is apparently... Oh, is someone streaming it already. Yeah, apparently this game, <laughs> someone played it and uploaded the entire playthrough to to YouTube already. Oh. It was like nine hours long. Yeah. It's been taken down, but like... It, yeah, Google Lord there. of the Rings, the two towers. That's <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Um, okay, and then on the 30th, we have a game called Friends vs. Friends. Uh, this is a shooter that combines combat and deck building, apparently. Oh, it looks a oh. little interesting excuse me here i was hoping it was going to be a fighting game based on the hit series friends <laughs> <laughs> try that on my show everyone picks, everyone picks ross because he is the biggest <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh i'm not sure this is just a, like a little quirky game i was like oh maybe and then, um, uh, what else we got uh on the 30th as well we've got system shock remastered oh nice i know system shock is a lot of fav uh, people's favorite games so this could be one to keep an eye on. Hacker. I think that's what she says. I can't remember. 
Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, last but not least, on the 31st, we have a game called Doomblade. Uh, this is a 2D action Metroidvania. I've played so many of them, though. This one looks like quite fast paced and like pretty cool. Looks kind of like Hollow Knight ish. Yeah. Oh, it might be cool. That was pretty neat. Yeah. What else we got was. That's it. There's uh, not much, but we, we, <laughs> we got the big, big week ne the week after. So. Cool. All right. Well, let's uh, wrap this up then. Thank you for listening, everybody. We're going to do our socials and then go. So, my name is Josh Bottlerworks on everything. You can find me if you dare. How about you, Will? Uh, hello. You know where to find me. <laughs> Steve. I am Quick Quick. That's Q U I K W I X. And when this podcast is out on YouTube, I hopefully will be live with my like stream upgrade. So come check that out. Oh, nice. And Sam. Hello. I'm Sam. <laughs> right. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.